We are back for the latest episode of Vibe with Five. <clears throat> Match day one. <clears throat> Woo! It's good for some teams. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going? I said, we've got to go and take our seats. He said, no, 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 stay there. We've got to stay there. I said, why, man? What's wrong? He said, no, no. Um, Varane's coming out. He's going to come and say hello to you. I said, right. Wow. Is that how we're rolling now? No one out here said Ben White's better than Varane. I don't know where everyone's getting all of this from. Yeah, I'd never said that. No one said that online. I watched Sky yesterday to watch Graham Souness dig this guy out because he said just before the broadcast when United aren't even playing, Paul Pogba, he expects four assists. There's only six times that's ever happened in the Premier League year before. Paul Pogba. It could, it could be his last season. He won't rest easy. If he walked out of May United, I know for a fact that Paul Pogba will look back and go, didn't win the Premier League, didn't win the Champions League. That's not what I'll come back for. The Harry Kane situation. Does Levy come out and address it straight away? Because what's going on? Is he staying? Is he going? There must be stuff going on that has not been said between both parties. <laughs> We are back for the latest episode of Vibe with Five. Myself, Joel Bayer, dressed in all black, still mourning, funeral settings. <laughs> Rio, I run this place, Ferdinand. Yeah. And of course, Stephen Housen in the building. We are back with a new sponsor, Rio. Yes, man, we are. Um, after the success, success of last season in lockdown, now we're here live and direct. Um, Soaking, they sponsored us last year through the, the pandemic. They're back here now live and direct for the season this soaking app is now live for anyone looking for money saving for quick easy way of transferring and sending money abroad the download is on in the app store make sure you go and open that a free soaking app is available with global currency Woo! the account's open mm. and it gets you get a soaking card we got a soaking card here or not we got yeah, there couple we are. soaking Please. cards and all you pay like is a, is a fixed monthly fee there's mm. no hidden fees or anything like that mm. and you get unlimited money transfers cost-effective currency exchange in 38 different countries. It's safe. That's what a big thing. You know when you're transferring money? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. To be safe. No, no, none of that scamming business. Yeah, bro. yeah. You know Fast, I mean? convenient, yes. easy to do, man. So you yeah. need to do that. And don't forget, with so soaking, you can ditch your cash, mm -hmm. which come in a cashless society, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. And you can use a soaking debit card for all your holiday payments when you're abroad without any extra fees. Mm -hmm. So listen, go to soaking.com. Any more details, transferring money, easy way to do stuff. There you guys. But you know what, yeah? I, what I love about it as well, they're going to be very involved with us this season mm -hmm. where we're going to be doing like scoreboards and stuff to yeah. see, you know, who's used their soaking card the most during the course of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're going to be with us when we've got guests. Mm -hmm. I'm just really looking forward to it. And it's a fantastic partnership. Went well during the Euros. So yeah. soaking. Thank you. Welcome. Let's get it popping. Straight after this, by the way, I'm going to meet them. So I'm going to go for some lunch with them. So Nice. Yeah, shout out. Shout out to the soaking team. Yeah, good. We see you. All right. Cool. So... <clears throat> Match day one. <clears throat> Woo! It's good for some teams. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Not so good for all the teams. <laughs> but well, where were we starting today then? It's gotta be it's gotta be the United game. Isn't it? If you want one, it. If you I'd rather start at uh, a low ebb and then Do you want to start at the top or the bottom, Joel? Yeah, yeah start shut at low up, Steve. <laughs> start at the bottom and work our way up. I want to finish on a good note. How's that how's that the first words that Steve says today? <laughs> Joker. Um yeah, let's start at Arsenal, innit? Um <laughs> You know, shout out to Brentford. Yeah. First top flight appearance in 74 years. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, you got to give them ratings. I mean, Canos, good finish. No guard. You know what I mean? But I just think, you know what? I just think that the actual, the way that, the way that you guys performed, I heard the, the words, a lack of intensity today was the biggest. I saw righty. Go, went mad on the, on mm. the social media about it. And, and I'd be the same if it was my club. Your first day of the season, fans just coming back in the stadium and you're lacking intensity. That doesn't there was add no up. interest. That doesn't add up, man. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm not trying to hear this whole, like as it wasn't playing, Obama Young wasn't playing. That's usually my go-to excuse. Mm. But, you know, I'm sorry, Balogun, I don't want to put the young guy down. Obviously, he's, he's coming up. He's done really well last season. But this is your opportunity. You've got to grab it with two hands. You can't let the stage 
be bigger than you know the, the actual event. I mean, I agree with that, yeah. But I I go back to this is more than an individual performance. Yeah, well, yeah, this, this is this is like almost like a culture at a football club. Like you can't go into a, mm. the first game of the season. You should be bouncing into that game. We were there at Old Trafford. You was there. The energy in that stadium, which then transferred onto the pitch. For both sides, not just Man United, for Leeds as well. Not really. You lot use the cheat card and you announce Varane beforehand, yeah, just to get yeah, maybe, you know, maybe win, win, helps. win, all of that but moment. Was you in on that with the club, by the way? No, like you know, the maddest thing is, is that it's, it's I was standing there and for BT, we're doing all our stuff to punch him right before the game. Yeah, and then there comes a, a, a time before yeah. kickoff. I think it's like six, seven minutes before kickoff. We have to get off the, the touchline. Mm. So I was just making my way to our seats, which is just off the off the, the touchline next to the uh, boxes, and then the, one of the guys from the comms team. Man United who used to work there when I was there said, Rhea, where are you going? I said, we've got to go and take our seats. He said, no, 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 stay there. We've got to stay there. I said, why, man? What's wrong? He said, no, no. Um, Varane's coming out. He's going to come and say hello to you. I said, right. Wow. Is that how we're rolling now? I said, you know what? That's the intro, you know. That's the way to introduce a player because I always look at other clubs and think, right, Man United, we don't really get it right in the intro in players and the way players leave, etc. Mm. But on Saturday... Oh man, Perfection. it was. I can't even Perfection. lie. It's like, almost like passing the torch. It was mad. It was, mm. you know. And, but we're going to get into that shortly. Yeah, we're talking about. I, I, just, I, just, know, I just know that I was sitting next to Tom. Tom, our camera guy, was also at the game. Shout out to him. And um, we were like filming. And then randomly, like as the moment was happening, we all kind of went. Like, and yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, all I was thinking, Ben White, Ben White, Ben White, but, <laughs> but, 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 nah, but you're yeah, out. no, I did, I was thinking, ben White, but then, but then the, the moment was so big. I was just, oh, so let's, let's forget Man United right now, yeah? Are you not happy with, I'm very happy, like ben White? I'm very happy with Ben White because everyone, everyone, people, first of all, yeah, you guys need to stop, yeah, with the, the rumors. No one out here said Ben White's better than Varane. I don't know where everyone's getting all of this from, mm. yeah, I'd never said that, no one said that online. Yeah, right. Sure, right. Phillips might have done. Who? Sean Wright Phillips. Yeah, he did. He did. He did. Shout out, Sean Wright Phillips. You got to come on and, and clarify this type did, of talk. Did he say that? Yeah, he did. He did. I saw it on, on online somewhere. He's bantering. He's got to be bantering. But listen, Ben White, obviously, Ben White, top quality player. He's going to be a good player. He's young. Everyone's talking about 50 mil, 50 mil. That's what happens these days. You look, we're going to, you look, we're going to sell Jesse Lingard at the age of 28, 29 for like 30 mil. It were but, going but, to. But my, my, the issue I have with Arsenal, especially centre-backs, mm. you can't buy for in a year. Or if, I, if I'm a man, if I'm an Arsenal fan... He's good fan, now. He's, no, good, he's now. good now. Yeah, but what, what, what you need, you need someone to come in and grab up the training round, grab up all the players and say, come, let's go. Yeah, we had him. It was David Luiz, but now he's gone. No, Kicked he's, him out. And, and that's, the, that's, the, that's the, the... I feel that Ben White, at this stage of his career, needs a partner... I hear you. You're right. ...bring him along. Like a Harry right. Maguire... Like maybe a Varane, maybe like a Thiago oh, David Silva. David Luiz was never that player. No, 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 he, he wasn't. I, I, I just think that, that Arsenal have needed a centre-back to come in and defend. Steve, you're not saying much, but you're saying a lot. You need to stop. No, man. <laughs> I, 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 ben White, yeah, I think, yeah, he'll be, I think he'll end up being a, a, yeah. a decent signing for them. Mm. But I think he, the biggest issue he's got, if I was being courted by Arsenal now, I'm thinking, who am I playing with? And if I'm him, I'm sitting there thinking, rah, no. I'm going to need some help because I'm going to be overexposed, like we've seen. You know what I mean? They play against Brentford, getting exposed, getting you're there having to deal with people. There's no backup really sometimes. And you look at that game and you look at someone like Ethan Pinnock come from Dulwich Hamlet, my best mate Gavin runs mm -hmm. that team and Cats, they run mm -hmm. that team. Mm -hmm. He comes from there, from Dulwich Hamlet, playing in the Premier League now, looking nice. Shout out to Dulwich Hamlet, man. Yeah, man. But yeah, it's, it was it, it was disappointing to say the least because <laughs> the group chat was going off, guys. I can't lie. Pinging. Like I was trying to divert so much heat to Man United. Yeah, I ended up I ended, <laughs> I ended up getting into an argument with Steve yeah, about City and United. And Rio was just like, "Why are we talking about you? Why are we talking about Arsenal for? It's about it's about no. Why are we talking about United for? It's about Arsenal right now. It's about Arsenal." But you know, you know what? It was just it was tough to take. And I think for a lot of us Arsenal fans, we realise that currently, this is where we are. You know, this just, is where just, we just are. Just build around ECR and Saka. The big thing for me, Willock. Willock scored, what, how many goals did he scored last season? Seven, eight, nine goals? You, you, One goal goal scored in his entire career. That's how many. But he's, let, he's let, they're letting goals leave the, the squad like that. Don't, I, I don't know. I was baffled by that one. 
Yeah, you know what? Yeah, and there's memes flying around now for the Chelsea game. We're gonna have to put the oh memes the Lukaku the Ben White one's too much. Lukaku Ben White White <laughs> meme. We're putting it in right now. But yeah, uh, like, it's just it's just a bit mad, isn't it? But, I feel for Arsenal fans. A lot of people I bumped in, bump into even on the train here today. A lot of them are Arsenal fans, and even the guy who delivers the post, he's he's an Arsenal fan. He was saying like, "Yeah, what's happening?" I ain't really got too many answers. It's just like it's there, there's 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 quite a lot wrong there at the moment. I hope Arteta gets it right. I think I hope Listen, Arteta gets it right. Go on, Joel, see. what happened when Solskjaer came in? He came into a defense that was Ashley Young, Antonio Valencia, Smalling, and Jones, and in a couple of years, he's flipped that into Maguire, Varane, Wambasaka, and Luke Shaw. Mm. I mean, we know there's limitations to Wambasaka, but from a defensive point of view, he's quite strong. There's obviously positional things that he needs to fix, but he's still quite a young, uh, new to that position, I think it's fair to say. But he's overhauled that back four entirely. How now, much was it, Steve? How much? Yeah, it was pricey. There's no two ways uh, around it, but I, I think, think we've spent got, well. I don't, I don't think necessarily think that. Oli has wasted money. any money in this. Hmm. I agree. I agree. Money, money, money is a big issue. Pep Guardiola said some interesting stuff at the weekend, didn't he, about about finances? And I and, and I have to agree with him in, in in some capacity. They fielded the most expensive team ever to be put out in a Premier ever. League game ever, wow. which is which is crazy. But at the same time, he he was saying, don't let, let's not forget that Man United in their pomp were spending heavy compared to other teams. They were outbidding everyone to get the best players. Inflation. Real. You're wrong and he's wrong. What do you mean? Why? United didn't outspend. United have, in the Premier League era, United only been the most spendy team in five of those years. But there was a moment. I, just, I didn't say it the whole no, time. We're, I said we're talking about was, before uh, the shakes, mate. A moment. There was a moment yeah. when Man United were the team that if they went for a player, mm -hmm. they could outmuscle everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they, they had didn't. that moment. Let me just pull it up for you. The Who spent the most year by year in the Premier League? And it'll shock you. Because there's some teams here that did nothing. Right. So from the start of the Premier League, it was Blackburn, then mm -hmm. Blackburn, mm -hmm. then Everton, then Newcastle, Newcastle, Newcastle. And it was United didn't spend the most until the summer before the treble season. And then it was Liverpool, mm -hmm. then Leeds. You might know why. Then United and United back to back. And that those you're literally two of those widows, by the way. And then it was Chelsea, 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 <laughs> Liverpool, City, 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 Chelsea, Chelsea, Tottenham. United, City, 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 Chelsea and uh, Liverpool, United, then Chelsea. That doesn't tell the full story, though. No, it doesn't, but that's on a season-by-season. That season. People story. have this thing that United no, spent loads it's, of money it's, to win all those it's titles. The, it's, it's, uh, but if you went into those windows and, and see who spent the most on a single player in an, in an individual window, I bet Man yeah, United, United come up more bet. often. But, Man United come up more often because Man United's squad at them times was, was arguably, if not the best squad in the league, so they haven't got a buy as many players, which then mm. obviously makes the number go up. Okay. But if you said so, going and getting a big player in a window, for instance, Berbatov, Carrick, myself, Van Rooney, Veron, Van Nistel, they, these they, they're, they're mm. big numbers. Mm. They were big and they were outbidding people to get those players. Mm. So other, other squads might have gone and got invested in six players that window, which made their number at the end in that window massive and bigger than Man United's. But to go and get a player, when Man United went in for a player invariably, especially in Premier League against Premier League players, against Premier League teams, they got that player because they could outmuscle them financially. All right, let me throw this at you. Here's some so I'm not for wrong. You. you ready for this? <laughs> go All on right. then. From 1992 to 1998, you'd argue United was relatively successful, would you not? Say again, from 1990? 92 to 1998. Summer of 98, United yeah. went big. We went with Yapstam. Yeah. Um, Blomquist, uh, Dwight York. We, we kind of went bananas that summer. But from 92 to 98, that six-year period where United won all bar one of the, the available league titles. Oh, actually, no, Luke, Arsenal stuck in with one, didn't they? Like United it. had a net spend of minus 40 grand. Yeah, but why though? Why though, Steve? You're not, you're not painting the bigger picture. You're homing in on one. Because they had the class of 92 coming, he hasn't got a spend okay. there, has he? But people talk, literally Pep Guardiola got into a press conference and went, United outspent everyone, but we didn't. Literally, Manchester City, who got relegated out of the Premier League, spent 12 million, which is 12 million more than United. Spurs outspent us, Chelsea outspent us, Liverpool and Arsenal and Newcastle outspent us. Those are the teams who spent the most in the 90s, and it wasn't United. No, United I didn't say... Oh, oh, you, 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 anyone. No, no, you don't say, I said that May United, they could out-compete anybody in the transfer market with an individual player. They could. 
because Man United had that power and that financial clout. But to add to that, Man United squad was that good at that time and they had the young players that had come through. They didn't need to spend on multiple players. They went and got one big one to improve the squad. The like, the Cantona, yeah, the and that's where United are in the moment. We've needed to spend and play catch up because I don't think the Glazers put enough money into the club or allowed us to spend enough of our own cash. Oh, the, the recruitment the- was wrong. Yeah, I think the the back end of the Ferg years, they just didn't let him spend. He had a positive spend. Like, what's all that about? And then I think we lurched from one manager to the next for the next four or five years. I think since Ollie's come in, invariably his transfers have been a success. The only one with the question marks maybe Dan James, and he was peanuts in the grand. But that's what I'm saying. You, you say that we haven't been able to compete, or we haven't done the numbers. Sanchez doesn't go Man City because Man United pay more. Mm. Pogba comes to Man United because of his connection, but they pay more than anyone. Mm. Yeah. Do you know what I mean, I can there's a list of them players that Man United are p- outdoing Man City, who are owned by like Abu Dhabi. So you yeah, can't sit there and say that United Man United. But you, well, you, can, you can't sit there. Yeah, it's but you can't the sit there and say that Man United haven't had this and haven't had that. When Man United are outbidding Man City on certain players, on oh, Maguire, Maguire's another one. You know, they weren't willing to go above a certain number. Even, Man United said we will. Like even playing fifty mil for Fred, that's not a joke, you know. Yeah, forty-five, fifty million for for Wamba Saka. Like 30 yeah, odd well, million for the left back for, Rio, for sure. The, the quote from Pep Guardiola is in the past, United won a lot of titles because they spent more money than other clubs. You remember that? Didn't fucking happen. It's a mm. myth. All right. Now, now yes, United spend thing. a bit spendy at the moment, but he says when United won a lot of titles, it was because they spent more money than other clubs. I've just proved to you when United won like what was it, four, five out of six titles. We was literally outspent by Manchester City who got relegated by Liverpool. <laughs> and Blackburn. Do you know? Do you know what this just this, this tells me? It just tells me that Arsene Wenger was a flipping man. That's what it tells me. Yeah, he was because mad in the, in the yeah. To the take, in. I I don't understand. Like, and you know what? This is probably this weekend's probably the first weekend where I thought maybe, just maybe, we could have been better off with him remaining. Maybe. Well, that's what I mean. A lot of people Maybe. do that. The grass is going to be greener over there. It ain't always yeah, like that, boy. That's true. But I do reckon that he should have went years before. Why? This is another point. Why is Unai Emery successful prior and, and after. after he spell at Arsenal? It might not be down to the managers. It might be down to the structure at the club. It's true. It's true. We don't know. Do you know what I mean the, the the recruitment, the 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 people behind the scenes? I don't know. I'm I'm looking for questions. I'm not saying they are the yeah, problem. Yeah. I'm just looking for answers. And it's like mm. he can't do what he done at Villarreal and be a and be, and be a shambles yeah, at, yeah, at yeah. Arsenal. It's, not an accident. it's crazy. You know? Did he win? Um, he won the Europa four times now. I he think he won League uh, as well, though, didn't he? Did he? Yeah, but we're winning yeah, League uh, with yeah, it, no, with no, Paris no, Saint Germain is a, is still a minor. Counts though, because Poch <laughs> Poch couldn't do it. Yeah, but Poch coming halfway in it. Anyway, let's move on. What we got next? What we got next? What we got next? Um, you got yeah. your shades on because is that is it that much yes, of a depressing weekend for you? I was supposed to be wearing my shades during the Arsenal talk. <laughs> it's a funeral still. But, um... Yeah, no. What I was saying before was about Arsenal. Is like obviously at the moment they're a meme. Every all the WhatsApp groups are popping off, like mimicking and my, like mocking Arsenal massively. But Arsenal were a club to be respected back in the day, man. They were like. The, the marble halls when you walked into that stadium as a, as a player when I was going I used to think yeah man this is what it's about Arsenal the history it just you can feel it when you walk in I just don't know quite what's happened to them man it's a graveyard now man like it's it's literally like bef- some players go to Arsenal now as a stepping stone before you go to Man United and Arsenal because that is the pinnacle of your career. Mm. You weren't thinking, I'm going to go to Man United so then I can go somewhere else. Maybe some of the foreign players because maybe they were enticed in a different way. But you, growing up in this country, oh, that is the pinnacle. Either Arsenal or United, you're there. What are you the maddest thing is, <laughs> <laughs> the maddest thing is, right, is that that's how I thought about Arsenal as well, right? Yeah. But by the end of my career, yeah. when I was leaving Man United, I, um, I saw Arsene Wenger in a, in a hotel Mm. And I said to him, um, Arsene, listen, I'm leaving United now, you know. If you want, I'll come there and I'll try and help you. I'll try and help the dressing room, etc. Like Because I think you lot, you lot need help in that department and I can help. But obviously, I'll come and play. But more importantly, that dressing room, the, the culture and that, I'll come. Yeah, He didn't take me up on the offer because obviously, and he was right because the performances at, at QPR weren't, weren't up to the levels. <laughs> but in the changing room, 
I believe I could have helped him in that in that sense because I think that's where a lot of the culture it derives mm, from. It's true. Because I want to know who's dragging up who in the changing room. Who who has got such a winning ethos that it's it's nothing but a win. You look at the teams, yeah. Last year, Man City won the league. Mm. I know that there's Diaz now. Mm -hmm. There's Fernand Fernandinho. Even Aguero, who's injured. Yeah, but minimum them two. Minimum. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, 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 Sterling would put it on people, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. I know that them two others are more like yeah. those type of guys. Yeah, yeah, leaders, yeah. yeah? Mm -hmm. Liverpool before that, when they won the league, you know that Milner, Henderson, Henderson. Van Dijk, mm -hmm. even Alisson probably. Mane. Mane, Salah, but yeah. we're going to be pulling rank in that changing room. Yeah. With Arsenal, I, don't, I look around and think, I don't know who's going to be going to people. Listen, do you know what? Stop fucking about now and get off social media for a little bit now. Let's just knuckle down. No, and no, get we're, not, we're, right. we're not. What are you saying social media? We're not We're not constantly on social media. No, no, media. I'm just saying, just an example. I'm not saying it's, a, it's a, I'm just giving you examples. Like, it's like, or, or, or you know what? Let's make sure before we do anything outside here where mm. we're going to bring focus on our football club, mm. we start getting a bag of results together. Yeah. Until that point, mm. it's just everyone just calm down and relax. I don't know if them conversations are being being had. Oh, hey, listen, young gun, you just come in and sit in the team now. Relax yourself. Our young guns are good. No, no, I'm not saying that's what's that, that, that but I'm just saying if a situation like that happened where a young player kind of steps out steps of the training, training gonna, ground or whatever, have, yeah. who's pulling that young player up? I could have told I could have give you a bag of names in our mm -hmm. change room that would have gone bang. Relax yourself. Yeah, I can't. I'm struggling. I'm thinking maybe Leno, in it. No. What? 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 Are you... <laughs> no. Is that who Steve's covering his face? No. <laughs> that right there. I know they're the good kids there as well. Yeah, yeah. It's got. And United had it recently as well. You look around there and you go, "Where's the leaders?" Mm. And I I know it's like, it's proper budget sort of where's the passion where's the leaders but it is a factor that plays a big part into it someone that sets the standards i guess roy Keane is the pinnacle of setting the standards and maybe he did it to a psychotic level maybe he was maybe he didn't quite need to be roy Keane for setting the standards like i always i love that story of i can imagine dwight york walking into his first training session it's august the sun's shining he's wearing a chain for some reason like and he's stepping out onto the pitch at, it's probably the cliff still then roy Keane fires a ball at him from three feet away and then gets in his face and growls at him saying canton i would have controlled that just letting the motherfucker know that this is the level at manchester united like and you go who does that now Mm. And for a couple of years, United didn't have that. But now you look at that side and you go, I think Maguire yeah. does that. Yeah, I think Bruno Fernandes is doing that. I think Luke Rashford's Shaw grown in Even that. Rashford. Yeah, Rashford, Shaw, Cavani. Uh, yeah. It's, Cavani. You look at definitely. City. You look at City. Greenish goes for 100 million to that club, breaks a transfer record in, in this country. Mm. You can't tell me that someone like De Bruyne is not going to be sitting there looking at him and going, listen, you know, there's levels to this. Mm. And then Jack will be responding with like, well, I'll show you these levels because, mm. but he's, but he's got something to aim at. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because it'd be body language. It ain't even, you got to say nothing sometimes. It's like you, you're loose with a pass and then all of a sudden you look around because you are that little bit like, I hope everyone, no one see that. And you just look <laughs> and someone's looking at you like that. Yeah. No, listen, it's, it's dire, but listen, let's, let's move on, man. Cause all this is depressing me, man. I got a, I got a long day. Yeah, I want to know what you think on. So yesterday, Jack Grealish, uh, a relatively quiet game. I watched Sky yesterday to watch Graham Soonis dig this guy out because mm. he said just before the broadcast when United aren't even playing, Paul Pogba, he expects four assists. There's only six times that's ever happened in the Premier League era before. He mm. expects four assists from a £100 million player. Well, for starters, Pogba was 89, so let's get that right. Mm. And then you actually have a £100 million player on a pitch who drops a stinker like that. Now, I don't think you should be digging... Jack Grealish out in his first game. But when you say, two hours ago, I expect four assists from a £100 million player, you've just set the bar, Graham Souness. Where was that energy? You want the same Jack energy. Grealish? You want yeah. the same energy, No, nah, no, nah, he was wrong for that. He was wrong for what he said about Pogba, in my opinion, or what he didn't say. You know, I think I was talking about it with Rio offline, and, and Rio says that he understands, and you said you, you believe he... I, I, I don't think... Graham Soonis articulated it, but I believe he thinks, let's not get out of our pram about this. Let's not go overboard. Let me see this for the next three months. I want consistency. I think that's where Soonis' mind is at with Paul Pogba. And this be, let's have, if we're being honest, consistency has probably been one of the factors that goes against Paul Pogba in his Man United career. Mm. But when a man produces four assists on day one of the season, 
you've got to give it up. You've got to hate it. You've got to just put your, you your feet into the side or, yeah. or you, and, and say, you know what? what, what well what done, yeah. and what Because it doesn't happen often. How many players have we had in the Premier League? How many of them have produced four assists in one game? Six. Even, before, even, before even, that. even me as a guest... I was an honorary guest. By the way, let's clear up the rumours, yeah? Oh, Joel might as well support Man United and all this rubbish, yeah? When you're invited, yeah, to Old Trafford by Rio and Jake, yeah, the re- the red carpet treatment is different. So you might see me in looking <laughs> like I'm enjoying myself. You heard, you guys know what RD says, you know? Is it that, what he goes? Adiola want to roll with a geezer. Is it the team or the lifestyle, sweetheart? It's the <laughs> lifestyle. It's the lifestyle. I'm not. I'm not trying to. Uh, oh, you know, we do it right. We yeah, roll the, out the You carpet, know what I mean? People. I'll take the lifestyle all day long, but don't forget, I'm still bleeding a cannon. That's yeah, what I'm yeah. bleeding. He, 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 I have to say that Joe, no matter what happens in the WhatsApp group and that, he defends Arsenal. Come on, you know what I mean? But, but yeah, now let's. I, I just think that listen, uh, Paul Pogba. This, it could. It could be his last season. If he doesn't resign, and that's it, looks like he's going that way a little bit. Well, you, you but, I, but I think that if he smells success mm. and a winning period, mm. there's something that says to me that he'll go, I want to be a part of it. Yes. And because that's all he's come for. When I speak to Paul, mm. all he talks about is wanting to win. Mm. I want to win Champions League. Yeah, we won the Europa League, but Champions League is what I want to win. Mm. I want the Premier League and that. And he's got a burning desire to do that for Man United. He grew up here as a kid. He wants to win. He wants to be known as one of the, the, the guys that mm. was part of a winning team, a yep. winning era at this club. And I think he won't rest easy. If he walked out of Man United, I know for a fact that Paul Pogba will look back and go, didn't win the Premier League, didn't win the Champions League. That's not what I come back for. Yeah. So, and I think, so there'll be unfinished business that I, I would like to think that he would go, do you know what? As much as, and you know, by the way, going to Real Madrid, or somewhere like Barcelona right now, is that you're not going, you're not taking a forward step. You're not going to be closer to winning the Champions League going there than you are Man United at the moment. So Paris Saint-Germain is probably the only place that you could go where you could justify him going to win Champions League football yeah. outside of England. So uh, the, 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 the pool of clubs that he would, could have gone to two years ago is it's, it's it's, it's, it's it's shrunk. It's gone. Yeah. Yo, Rio, yesterday you said something really interesting in the group chat when it was about... Um, when you first retired, you actually didn't want United to be successful so none of the players eclipsed your own legacy and mm. that you changed your mind on that. Do you want to... Mm. Yeah, you know, I, I, it's weird. But after what happened at the weekend with Varane coming over and almost like passing the torch type vibe that happened, um, it made me just start thinking, like, I'm so happy that he's here. I'm so happy that him and Maguire now can form a partnership that I think could be the foundations for a period of success if it goes well. Big if, right? Um, and I want it to happen, and I'll celebrate and enjoy it like all my United fans. But if I roll back to when I retired, that first couple of years after I retired, if someone had said to me, do you want my United to win? I'd have said, if I have to be honest, I would have said, no, not really. Or win, but don't do as well as that i done. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And because there's that sense of like, I've lost this adulation now on a daily basis. I've lost this going to carrot and going to the games, winning that feeling after a, a, a win away somewhere or at Old Trafford in the change room, sweating your kits off on the floor, looking at, yeah, man, that's hard work, but it's worthwhile. I ain't got that. And there's a tint of either envy. I don't know what the emotion is or what the word to explain it is. It's not jealousy. It might be jealousy. I don't know if I'm being brutally honest. Mm. And I think a lot of players, a lot of us retired players have that energy towards the team that they previously paid, played for. Don't do outdo what I've done. Please don't outdo what I've done. And I was one of them. And I think mo- most of us pundits or players that played before were honest. They would admit that. At the time, I wouldn't have. But I'm in a place now where I, I, I can. You're comfortable I'm with comfortable you, yeah. and, and And I would really... I'd, if they if they go and eclipse what we've done, I'll be one of the biggest supporters, as everybody knows. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But it wasn't like that for me when I first retired. So you would have wanted the players and, and we spoke about this briefly in the group chat. So you said you would have, you would have wanted the team to do well always because you're a Man United yeah. fan, but let's just say a Varane or a Maguire, you didn't want them to be Vidic and Rhea yeah, at no, the time. No way. I'm thinking we need to be the man still. I still want to be the man. My ego was playing a part probably in that because mm-hmm. we all have egos, big egos as players. You have to have if you want to be the best. 
And I'm sitting there going, I want him to do well, but don't come nowhere to challenge him what we've done. And I'm sure Steve Bruce and Gary Pallister were the same before we came. They would, if, if they weren't, I'd be very surprised. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow. To be honest with you, like I think that is it's very good that you're able to be honest and admit it. And I guess it's a side that we don't see from successful, very successful players. Mm. Your era, well, even before your era, the Andy Coles, he probably always wants to be the main man. Yeah. I see sometimes when people don't recognise him as much as they should do in the Premier League, he goes, mm. what was that doing? Was that playing golf or something? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So, it's yeah. like competitive at nature. You don't lose that, do you? Yeah. Before we... Go off to another topic. Greenwood as a number nine. Mm. Jeez. I saw some stuff in that game that I know some of the coaches and the people behind the scenes of Man United are saying that this isn't this isn't a surprise. Mm -hmm. It's just been waiting to happen in the first team. His body's catching up, obviously. Mm -hmm. He knows what he needs to do. You can see that his mind, his brain's on the right wavelength with the first team players. But sometimes physically, some players like Rooney came in the first team physically ready. He's a man. I mean, a man already, but you can see Mason Greenwood is, built, is growing into that frame mm -hmm. of being a first-team player. And at the weekend, so it, Graham Soonis was right. He was one of the standout players, right? Because some of the movement, the ball retention, the ball getting fed into him, he looked like, oh, just give me the ball, bang, shrugging people off. The finish. The yeah. finish was a joke. He <laughs> run half the pitch, man. And so that's what I always say that. To run half the pitch and then finish, boom, like that, in the bottom man, corner, the way he someone, did. it's yeah. not like he just yeah. ran direct he someone he, away. What and to do that, man, it like it's he's building power. You can see that added to his game, and all these things come together. This kid, I think, if he goes to the Euros, if he had gone to the Euros, in it, 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 someone it'd have had massive impact off that bench because he just got he just knows how to score goals, man. At any level, ah, he's scary. And it's not about made... how technically flawless his finishing is because it's yeah. always. One inch inside the post, which makes yeah. me think it's very deliberate every time he does it. Yeah. And 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 Oli said it early on, he's the best finisher in, at the club. This is when Rashford was on fire, mm. Martial was flying. He said, Yeah, they're all great players, don't get me wrong, but the best finisher, mm. Greenwood. You know, and the fact that Sancho's here now will probably competition. Mm. You know, when we had on Wes Brown on the live last time, he said that it's not just the Jose Mourinho factor why Luke Shaw's playing better. As soon as Teles comes in, bang, you start to see a, 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 an even better Luke Shaw. I, I think Oli and his team, mm -hmm. his staff, need to take huge credit for the way that Luke Shaw has performed in the last year. He, the way he's improved at his consistency, mm -hmm. he backs himself now in every situation, Luke Shaw. When he's, when he's got the ball, he's confident. You can see he gets his body between the man and the ball. He feels he's can weights anybody, strength anybody. He's got the he, he's ball retention. His pass completion is is very very high, and he, you can see at the other end of the pitch he's starting to get assists and he scored goals of Euro, Euro final. But I just think there's a confidence that's been re, like re, rebooted into this player that once we were saying, wow, he needs to go to a new club, re kind of refine himself and reboot his career because he's been absolutely stripped of all types of confidence. Mm -hmm. So he's not going to be the player that we once thought he was. Well, now he's eclipsing the player we thought he was going to yeah, be. Yeah, it's true. It's mad. And it's hard for Steve to hear that. No, well, no, Steve's honest. He's been honest. Go on, Steve. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> he can't it's, admit oh it. Oh, my he gosh. He can't admit it. I bet this is your opportunity to show. Oh, man. Come on, man. Give the guy the props he deserves. Oh, I, I I have done. Like, let's get this myth out of the way. I thought everyone was getting a bit giddy the first half of the season. The second half of the season, he he was excellent. And there's no there's no caveat. There's no but. It was just he was excellent. I think people was talking about his form coming in a bit earlier than I thought it was there. Really, I thought there was still some mistakes. <laughs> but second half of the season, excellent. If he carries on like this, superb. Hmm. Sancho making his debut as well. Nice, yeah, tidy nice. little 15 minutes. It was nice. He hardly touched the ball, to be fair to him. You can't, you won't judge him on this. Mm -hmm. I think he's searching for, for fitness mm -hmm. um, and that will come in the next couple of weeks. But he's a game changer. And speaking to a couple of the guys behind the scenes at United, I think one of the surprising, not surprising, but one of the facts that's impressed them most is his ability to find the, the final ball. His decision-making in the final third. To, to assist and to really lay things on a plate for others has been uh, a joy to watch. No, he's, Rio, he's... can we can we get a special Vibe with Five trip down to Carrington to go and watch training? We don't have to film it. 
can we just go home and see what it's like? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm working on it. Don't worry, I'm working on it. I'm working on it actually for a few clubs, so it's not just going to be Man United. So anyone watching, we're looking to take people behind the scenes at a few clubs. We're working on that. Yeah, you guys don't forget we've we've did a special video during the course of the week, the match day reactions. If you haven't seen it, go see it. Myself, yeah. Rio, Steve, you know, I was a guest. We attended Old Trafford to watch the Leeds game, and it was an amazing video. Subscribe, Fred. Yes. <laughs> Andy Cole, great to have you here, man. Thanks for doing the interview. We were able to connect with the fans. So many people saying they love Vibe with Five. Uh, it was crazy, bro. When you weren't there, bro, I felt like you. Everyone <laughs> pictures non-stop. Did you hear the Leeds fans giving me a bit of stick, by the way, at the end of the game? That was terrible. It was funny, wasn't it? That was, I didn't find that funny, to be very honest with you. No, no, um, I mean, a few bad words, I, but it, it, was, it, it, it does give that football banter. I have missed it. As, as, <laughs> even if people do give you a bit of stick sometimes, you've yeah. got to take it with a pinch of salt. I think for me, it was a little bit personal, but um, there you go. Yeah, but um, they know why I left in the end. Yeah, I don't know. They should do. If they don't, then they've been, they've been under a rock for the last 20 years. Yeah. You know, the trophy. I also what I was going to say that like, you completely threw yeah, me. Trophy. What was I going to say? Oh, Go that on. was it. My wife said to me yesterday, Do you reckon Rio will ever come in the Stratford end with you? I was like, I see how mad it is for you walking through behind all the barriers. I don't think you'd be able to get in the Stratford end. No, it would be mad. I, I, I would come, yeah, but it's just like, I remember me and John O'Shea told you this story, didn't I, when we went to Anfield? No. I was, That's um, a mad place. To I go. was, uh, yeah, I was, I think I was suspended and Shazy was injured or something like that. Um, it was the game that Alan Smith done his ankle that time. Remember, oh, we lost one yeah. in the cup. Um, so it was an FA Cup game. So I went, early kickoff. Me and Shazy walked in and um, I put like a scarf around my face, up my hood up and that. And but the police come and said, listen, take your, if you're walking through Stanley Park, I said, uh, take your uh, hood off. And she, about six or seven policemen were there. And I remember Shazy going to the policeman, no, 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 that, that, I'm John O'Shea and that's Rio. We're Man United players. Can't, we're in Liverpool. Mm. We can't do it. Then one of the policemen who hadn't been listening just came behind me and dragged it off my face. And then I was just exposed. I felt naked in front of all these Liverpool fans. And then obviously that to kind of do build like a little bit of a, a wall around us of policemen and to walk us in the stadium. Got in the stadium and it was just mad, man. And like the fans, like half of them weren't even watching the game. They're just like having it with the Liverpool fans or, or shouting at me and Shazy. It was just like, it was crazy. But yeah, I'd love to do it. Could you feel? Could you feel the eyes on you? Like, could you feel? Oh, like, mate, you can't like, yeah. and you just see it like a domino. Like, oh, there's Shazy, there's Rio, there's Shazy, there's Rio, there's Rio, there's Shazy. Like everyone just, and everyone turns. It's just nuts. It's crazy. Man. But we get a sing song going in the Stratford End all day. There was a couple of years ago. I was, I was walking through to my entrance for the Stratford End, and there's a guy walking next to me with a hood up. And during you just glance at me, eyes with someone, I went, "Fucking hell, it's Ryan Giggs." <laughs> just hood up just trying to mooch through with, and not get clocked on his own and you just think Jesus no, Christ good. yeah I, I, it'd be a laugh trying to watch you trying to get in the Stratford end or that moment when like all of the crowd turns and realises because I'm about halfway up on tier two there'd be yeah. a moment when four or five people have clocked even if you've got a scarf over your face and you'd get away with that a bit more now because of these people wearing masks in the stands and stuff because of COVID and things like that so you probably would get away, especially if we can do it in like December or something like that when it's freezing. You'd but get I, away I'd with like in, I'd like to go in there, yeah. No one see me, yeah. And then like it go quiet a little bit and then just start the sing song. <laughs> Yo, and I... uh, oh, it'd be <laughs> unbelievable, it's, wouldn't it? It's mad. funny though, because even even during the summer, because we were recording this D studio in Manchester, and I remember like you will have your mask on, yeah. Some people generally can clock him with a mask, you know. And I just thought Rio's like six three, six four. Like you, there's no one else that's that tall in and around. I don't know how he was getting. I think he was alright. He was alright. No, a mask. For, for, I think for a lot of United fans, it doesn't go. Oh, who's that guy? You go. Oh, there's Rio Ferdinand wearing a mask. <laughs> yeah, it should. I don't know. I was trying to figure it out. But yeah, interesting stuff. We'll get it done this season. All right, going on to Chelsea, mm. potential Premier League champions. Joe, um, you know that second. this weekend, one, you lot are playing them, and two, they're going to have Lukaku, Kante, 
Chilwell and Reese James all back in the squad. Yeah, mate. Listen, they had top players last season as well. And we beat them twice. <laughs> all right. So uh, let's calm down. Yeah, they beat I, Palace three now. I, I, I don't know. I, 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 that that result weren't a shock for me. Palace are in a mad rebuilding situation with Patrick Vieira, and good luck to him. By the way, shout out Patrick Vieira, great guy. Wish him well. But that game was it was a gimme. If there was a game to bet on at the weekend, it was that game. Mm. Um, and the the big thing for me is is Trevor Chalobah. I yeah, watched him in, in the in the Super Cup game the other day with BT in Belfast. Massively impressed with him the way he defended. He had three big three or four big moments defensively where he pulled the hat out of the bag. It was unbelievable. And he comes up with a goal at the weekend. And to see the emotion, it the young so player much crying like him. that, man, it just it just like reinforces mm. that the, it is a beautiful game still somewhere. No, that was brilliant stuff, man. And it was good. It was good to see um, to see Alonso scoring as well. Pulisic, who mm. <laughs> that's a player right there, man. That guy. I don't think people realize how good Pulisic is. They got a deep squad, man. That's the thing about them. We talk about Man United's like array of talent, especially in forward areas. They got theirs as well, man. Ziyech has just gone out injured with a dislocated shoulder, it seems. But like Pulisic, he's got to pick from up there: Lukaku, Werner, Havertz, Mount, Pulisic, Pulisic yeah. Ziyech when he's fit. Yeah, had Hudson Odoi as well. Seven. Oh, yeah. You got yeah, seven yeah. players there, all yeah. worthy of playing in, in them front three yeah. positions. Because Tammy, he's gone, man. He's gone. Yeah, that's a big move for him, though. Big move. Big expectations. Them Roma mm-hmm. fans won't be expecting. Nothing short of like 10, 15 goals this season minimum because they they expect big stuff at that club. I mean, they got great support. You see the reception he got when he arrived there in Rome, man. So mm-hmm. I think he's somebody who wants he wants that adulation. He wants that that pressure. What you do know is Tammy Abraham. Whatever you think about him as a player, he scores goals. Every level we've played at, he scored goals. Yeah, as a kid, he, he broke records. Mm-hmm. Done it at Swansea. Done it at Aston Villa. Villa. Mm-hmm. Now he'd, he'd done it at Chelsea. He was, I think he was second top goal scorer last season and played like a handful of games almost. So he scores goals, but in a new country and our new surroundings. I mean, he's, he's going to be around Jose, so that's going to be interesting. Mm. Yeah, so someone who knows him, obviously, from being yeah. in England. So he was linked with him. United earlier in the summer. Um, who? Tammy. And I'd have had it, me. He was linked to Arsenal as well. I would have had him as well, to be fair. I think for Arsenal, yeah. I, I, see it. I don't see it for Man United right now. Not as yeah. first choice. I think he'd definitely be behind Cavani. And there's an argument to be made that you know he would maybe take minutes off Mason down the centre. Um, but I think there's just something different. I, I would have had him. Anyone that big. I mean, there's not mm. there's not that many Premier League level players that are that big, is there? Mm. So. I, I would have had Tom, our cameraman, for Arsenal up front, to be honest with you. <laughs> so, whatever. Um, we've got them on Sunday. That's going to be interesting. Well, I just need to see that meme again. It's yeah. funny, man. <laughs> <laughs> that Lukaku meme's too much. This is a time, though. You know what you think? Oh, all the chips are down. It's like Spurs against uh, Man City. Yeah. The chips are down for Spurs. Everything's negative around the club. Harry Kane, they're saying he's going to leave, etc. Then all of a sudden, that galvanizes some changing rooms. And look no, at the no, way that's that Spurs why we slapped performed. him last time. Yeah, and Spurs performed ridiculously well against Man City. So mm. it does if there's some bollocks in the changing rooms, but this is Arsenal we're talking about. Oh, stop it, because we beat you at OT last year and it was the same situation. Yeah, we struggled against we were... of shit teams. Don't fucking pick yourself up. It, it doesn't matter though. So that means on Sunday there's a there's a big opportunity for us to win. You know, we've got a very good record oh. against Chelsea as well in the last couple of years. Beat him in the FA Cup final. Did well in the last couple of games last season as well. Don't look at the friendly a couple of weeks ago. Are you going to bore them to death? What did you say? We're going to bore them to death. How? With what? We got exciting players. <laughs> I'm uh, laughing at your players. That's listen, like listen, listen. This He's time, laughing at your players, man. What I told people, yeah, you guys were all all over my socials, whatever. I said, yeah, you guys laugh it up. All I'm getting is stick. All these Man United fans laughing. But this time next week, I want apologies in the comment section. Yeah. Listen, Chelsea could play that beat beat and absolutely destroy you. I want an apology this time next week. That's it. Think, and, if, and, if, all right, and if Chelsea put three or more past you, what happens? Yeah. I want you to come on here in a, in a Man United shirt. Nah, 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 nah. You can't do it. What? <laughs> nah. <laughs> you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not anyway, let's games. move on then. Here we go. Yes, all right, cool. So before we go on, I just want to say, obviously Everton beating Southampton 3-1. We're not going to go into it. But yeah, good win for them. Uh, City beating Wolves, Watford beating Villa. That was now, good, that's a it? big turn up, especially because yeah. they got 100 million in, they've spent it mm. on a few players, and they get they get done by by Watford, man. Yeah, uh, that was a surprise to me. Yeah, but 
Watford, man. So. so. He's been linked Player. to Liverpool for a couple of years now, hasn't he? I, th- I was surprised he stayed when they got relegated. Yeah. They asked for too much money. They asked for oh, £40 really? million, yeah. But, oh, but wow. Massive result for Watford. Mm. Good for a good start. I think all the provided size, when you get off to a good start, Brentford the same, coming up and winning the way they did. You can't ask for much more. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, Newcastle losing to West Ham. What a result, man. Yeah. Moyes yeah. just carrying on from last season. Like, He's moving mad. People thinking, right, oh, it's, fans are back. It might be a bit different for... the. Antonio up front. Shout out Antonio. Yeah, man. Top goal scorer. Now, joint Mr. top goal Penn, scorer. Mr. Penn, but made it up, yeah. made up for it. Joint top goal scorer in Premier League history for West Ham, by the way, but alongside oh, the good. one and only Paolo Di Canio. So, wow. To see that, and that's from a right back, I see yeah. him say as well. Mm-hmm. So, he's done remarkably well. Like, yeah. so. And you had the uh, Suchek in your fantasy team as well, didn't you? Yeah, my fantasy team was on fire. Over 100 points this weekend, and Lukaku didn't even play. Oh, so, wow. like, wow. Like, I'm on flames right now. First day of the <laughs> season, can't be too carried away, like, but. Liverpool, oh, Liverpool beating Norwich 3-0 as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a big that was a big one. But to, I say it's a big one, but it's expected, really. It's expected, but I, what, Liverpool are a team that I'm not sure where they're at. I need we need to see them a few games. Like we're saying we expect Chelsea and Man City and Man United to be up there. Mm-hmm. Liverpool, because there hasn't been huge in, or, or, or much changes in their squad, you're just thinking, is, there, is it a squad that... Uh, are they going to have the same intensity and the, the, the fire burning still the same as it was before? These are the questions that need answering. It's going to take time to see. I think they got a problem. I think losing Wijnaldum is, is going to hit them harder Massive. than they thought it was. And I think having someone like Thiago, who I think, if he'd have gone to City or United, would be mint and be look outrageous. But I think because the way Liverpool's midfield is a is a non-possession sort of base midfield. Like, they're, mm. they're there to win the ball back and move it back up the pitch. They don't hold the ball like United try to and, and aren't exactly successful at, but or the way City do. I think he fundamentally changes what that midfield's about. And I think losing Wijnaldum and, and putting more emphasis on Thiago, they're going to want to try and play make more through the centre. And I think mm. that's not who they are. And I think no, that... They're not. This reminds me a little bit of when United sort of brought Rude in and we went from being what we were, we brought Rude in and it, it was, he was successful individually, but the team around him was a bit disjointed because he changed what our focus was about. And I think you're going to see a similar thing. They'll still be up there. They've still got too many good players to, I'm not going to say that they're not finishing top 10. That's an arsehole thing. Like this is a team that's still going to be in and around the mix, but I don't think they're going to compete with Chelsea or City. And I think United are probably just under both of those two. If we got a central midfielder, I'm going to start saying some outrageous shit. But I don't think we're going to get one. Mm. You said at the end of the episode and the match day experience, you said that, and some of the uh, fans held on to this when you said more signings to come at Man United. Do you believe that there's going to be more signings before the transfer window closes? I think if the right player comes available for the right price, Oli will go and get him in that area. The problem is, is who's out there, and I think uh, who could be a good fit. Saul Saul Nuguez, mm-hmm. I think, would be a perfect fit, and he's asking price or his release clause was one sixty a couple of years ago. It's now I think mid mid forties, maybe fifty. In today's game, that's like a yes, decent yeah. price for someone like him with the experience, yeah. Champions League experience. So I'm, I'm a big fan of these. I think it'd be, if you could get him in this window, mm-hmm. I think you do it. Um, I think Declan Rice would be a massive addition to this squad. That's I think you, you even see that, that one of the goals, I think the second goal yesterday, mm-hmm. he he starts it with a tackle, mm-hmm. gets the ball back, bang, gets it to the, uh, one of the others and they, they set up for the goal but or for the penalty. But um, Declan Rice, I'm a massive fan of. I'd love to see him um, uh, keep progressing the way that he, he is at the moment. He, done that. he was brilliant for England in the summer. I think West Ham... Um, if they keep him, they've done unbelievably well to keep him for another another season. Um, I think he, he he does well staying at West Ham. He does well going to another club, both both ways. Um, Ruben Neves? No, not for me. Not for Man United. Why I not? Because I look at him and I see a lot of Carrick in him. No, nah, I just don't. When I'm thinking about other players that there are available or that you could potentially go and get, he doesn't come in my top three or four. Mm. You know I mean, so interesting. All right, look, we spoke a little bit about Tottenham City already, but the Harry Kane situation does Levy come out and address it straight away? Because what's going on? Is he staying? Is he going? 
Yeah, uh, this situation is a weird one for me. I just, I just, when you look at it in terms of people that are running the club, sometimes saying saying nothing creates even more hysteria mm. around the club. It's not, it doesn't, it doesn't bode well for anyone in the situation. And I think everyone, else, everyone in the situation comes out looking worse. And at the moment, Harry Kane doesn't look great in this situation, and so, nor does Levy. But it's because there's no clarity on the whole subject. Now, if Levy come out or someone at the football club come out and said, listen, there is a price. I don't need to tell you the price, but there's a price. Mm. Until that price is met, he's a Tottenham player. So the proof will be in the pudding. Mm. If Man City want him, they know the price. They can get him at that price. If not, he's a Spurs player for the rest of this season. Mm. Simple as. If you get that out of the club, then it, 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 it stops all of the madness that's going on now. Casting aspersions on Harry Kane's professionalism, etc., which I'm, he, he could tell by the, the the statement he put out, he wasn't pleased with, and, and rightly so. Um, there must be stuff going on that has not been said between both parties, and the sooner Harry Kane comes out and says what it is, or the club come out and say what it is, but why should they? Well, if 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 you're not happy with what's being spouted and what's being said in the media because it's not true. Come and tell the truth then. Fair enough. That's what I think. Yeah, fair enough. Do you think there's a possibility that City getting drawn, Tottenham in their first game of the season, meant that Levy got a fixture list and went, I'm letting you go, but you are not coming back to this I, house that's, and in blue. That's exactly what I thought. He was never going to let him go this weekend. All without him saying, look, you're not playing the first game, which probably weren't going to happen. I'm with you on that one. I, I just think that Man City haven't met the, the, the price that they've been asked I think Spurs have got a number. They've said the number. And I don't think Man City have reached that yet. I think Man City will get to it. But I just think they're just chancing their arm. And they're dealing with the wrong person to try and push boundaries like that. Because Levy, don't, you don't mess about. Do you reckon that loss will will instigate City to actually go out and do it? Because they're, yeah. they're trying to play this false nine. Yes, they've done it and won the league. But for me, that's where they come short when it comes to the Champions League. And even in the league this year, it might not be enough to play a false nine. Do you reckon they'll go for it? Yeah, well, the way they've identified a player and and... Pep has spoke publicly as well mm. about Harry Kane. So I think we're now on certain terms that he wants him. Um, and he, uh, I'm sure, listen, if Pep Guardiola has just come off the back of winning the league, says I'm close to winning the Champions League now, I need Kane. I don't see them owners saying no. Yeah, I mean, it's about time they let him have some cash in it. Exactly. Fully the most expensive team in the Premier League history. <laughs> Miracles on the shoestring. Miracles. Yeah. I mean, he's yeah, hardly even his good. team. Only nine of that starting 11 was his signing yesterday. <laughs> this guy. I see you in the group chat yesterday, man. Just Listen, you can't. Dicks. I don't care what anyone says, man. They can't. You can't. Yeah. You can't try and diss Pep. Yeah, Pep's, Pep's the man. Up. He's the man. I can't the man. Don't worry about that. No, nah, he's the man. Might not be right. right, but I'm gonna. <laughs> Listen, we're wrapping up. Uh, what else has happened really quickly? I mean, just around Europe quickly. Messi unveiling and Mbappe booed. And Mbappe got booed, man. At the, at the, his home ground. Yeah, he's, right. he's going to go Real Madrid, man, next year. Do you leave there? Can I have some context that? Why did Mbappe get booed? Because he's not re-signed a new deal. The club have muted that they want him to sign. The club want him to sign a new deal, but he, he is, they're saying he hasn't signed anything yet. So the fans are looking at that like he's not committing. So they've mm. booed him. Mm. Maybe he'll go I, Arsenal, Joel. Yeah, maybe. If I'm Mbappe, I've got to be honest. Before I say I'd go to another team because you want to yeah, win the Champions League. Yeah, but right now, right PSG is the place to be. You can't want to go to Messi yeah. or Neymar and Ramos and all these names that have come through. You can't be looking to leave that. It's like being at the Harlem Globetrotters. PSG is lit at the moment, man. That's mm. the place to be. because, And I think they'll win the Champions League before Real at this current stage anyway. So. Barcelona and Real Madrid are in plenty of trouble, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's crazy. Right, Guys, listen, man, I've enjoyed that's it. it. We're back. We are back. Yes. Five with Five is back. New season. Stay with us. Subscribe. Mm. Notifications on. Tell a friend. Mm. We are here. Here to say. Shout out to Sokin as well, our sponsors again. Mm -hmm. Got you on board and make sure you check out the other videos. We'll be back next week. Peace. <laughs>